All right, today we're going to start on 3D vectors and 3D geometry. And the first thing to work out is how to draw and visualize these things. Because we've worked a lot with 2D planes, like this one, with one axis going across, one axis going up. But once you add the third one, things get a little bit spooky. So what you want to imagine when you draw things like this is that the blue axis is coming sort of out of the screen and into the screen. Or if you're drawing this by hand, out of the page and into the page. All right. And we'll often use uh, the x-axis as the one going sort of out and in to the page. Okay, The y-axis will often be the one going across, the z-axis will very often be the one going up and down. Now I say often because um, you'll see there's other ways to draw this. What doesn't change is the fact that these axes are oriented in what we call a right-handed way. Okay, why it's called right-handed is if you stick out your right hand um, and you try and point your thumb in the same direction as the x-axis, your sort of index finger should point in the same direction as the y-axis, and your middle finger will point in the same direction as the z-axis, and you can do that on your right hand, not your left. Okay, so you try your left hand, it won't work that way. And we tend to orient our axes in a right-handed way. Now this is how you normally draw it. Why we like drawing it this way as humans is because I guess most of it is familiar, right? Before I put the blue axis in, everything looks very familiar to us. But that's not really a good way to represent things. It's not a very realistic way of representing things in 3D. Something like this right, is actually better. Right, this is more uh, more true to how things might look if you had to project a 3D picture onto a 2D surface. Right, so if I can draw a sphere, say, in this uh, axis, in this coordinate system, it looked like that. If I grabbed the code that makes this sphere and I just put that into the other view, it looked like this. Even though it's it's coded as a as a perfect sphere, it gets warped because the way that this axis works is that well it doesn't actually work right it's it's warping what the three D picture would look like. Okay, so while we might draw it this way, um, you got to sort of know that this isn't actually a realistic or uh, even a nice projection of what's happening in the three D world. Right, so you might draw it like this, but it's not really an accurate portrayal. Um, another consequence of that is that later on, um, when I'm going to try as hard as I can to animate most of this sort of thing, um, it might be easier in terms of visualizing and uh, clearly explaining what's going on. It might be easier for me not to use this way of drawing it. Right? I might use a more realistic way. That way you can see what's happening a little bit clearer, hopefully. Okay, so while you might draw it like this, I might not for the purpose of these videos. Okay, um, also uh, there's just a few language things that, that you need to know, uh, like the planes, like XY, YZ, XZ. The XY plane is a plane that travels along the X and Y axes, so where Z equals zero then, right? Think of the X axis and the Y axis being like Y equals zero and X equals zero. The XY plane is where you're flat on the ground and Z equals zero. The YZ plane would be the plane going straight up and down like that, where X equals zero, so you're not drilling into the page or flying out of the page. And you have the XZ plane, which is the one going up and down like that. You're not going right or left, it's the vertical plane going straight through the page. Okay, so that's the three main planes. Think of these like the X and Y axes, just the planes now. Okay, so a lot of things that we knew about lines will be transferring to things about planes. We'll see that as we go through the rest of this. There's also uh, octants, we say, a bit like quadrants, but there's eight of them. We don't really use that language too much, so read up on that yourself, but I won't um, put too much on that here. It also gets really cluttered if I try. Okay, so um, just look at that yourself. All right, if we take a vector then in 3D, we write that very similar to a 2D vector, except there's three numbers, like the pink one there, two and three and one. Uh, that's listed in order of naturally x, y, z. So this would mean x equals two. So we travel across to x equals two, y equals three, and z equals one. Now, of course, you to use your imagination a bit here because it's 3D being projected onto 2D, so things will look a bit strange, but that would be the vector going out there, okay? We might ask, well, how long is this vector? What's the length, right? Um, and we will use Pythagoras just like in 2D, but it might take us initially two steps. 
right? So now just think of the XY plane, what's happening flat along the ground. You have this right angle triangle appearing. Okay, so look carefully at where that right angle is and try and visualize what's happening in the 3D. That is a right angle triangle, even if it looks like it's not. All right, so that's a right angle triangle uh, where one of those uh, edges will be the X value, which is just the two, right? And another edge will be the Y value, which is the three. And so we Pythagoras that and we get the red length to be the square root of 13. Okay, so the red length we have over here along the ground still, along the XY ground level plane is th root 13. Then we have another right triangle going this way. This one's actually going up into the air now. So it's root three crawling along the ground, but the Z value is one. So you've got the one there. And so the length of that sort of vertical right triangle, Pythagoras that is just going to be the square root of 14 then. Now, so that's the length. That's what we've got for the length of the pink vector. But if you look at the working carefully, you'll see that, well, you could have arrived actually directly at the root 14 by just doing square root of two square plus three square plus one square. And so the x, y, z coordinates, right? It's sort of like a Pythagoras, but there's three of them now, and they make up the 14 between the three of them. Okay, so not just a square plus b square, but there'll be a third one, but that just sort of joins the square root. Okay, so the length of a vector x, y, z is calculated with Pythagoras, but it's a 3D version. Uh, we write that with vertical bars around the vector. Um, in some contexts, you'll be doing a double bar, but maybe that's way later. Um, and it's exactly like Pythagoras, but the contents of the square root has all three coordinates in it, not just x squared plus y squared this time. Okay. And you'll see a common theme is that a lot of things you know about 2D coordinate geometry apply in 3D as well, in much the expected way. Okay. All right, so bring back the picture. Um, we will get another vector now, this negative one, two, three thing. And let's look at that one on the picture. So X is negative one, Y is two, Z is three. So it's going quite far into the air this time. And we might think, well, what's the distance then between these two vectors? How far apart are they? To get the distance, we want to think about the vector joining the end of the pink one with the end of the orange one, the vector there. And the distance between those two points will just be the length of the red vector. And we just worked out how to find length. So if we can know what the exact sort of value, the coordinates of that red vector is, we can just find the length of that and we're done. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, how do you get from the pink one to the orange one? Let's look at each of the three dimensions separately. So just the X first. So we'll grab those X values and see how do you get from the pink one to the orange one? And I think comparing them, you see that from two to negative one, you've got to go across by negative three. And so the X value is negative three. What about the y value going across this time? Well, if you compare those ones, you'll find that to get from the pink to the orange, you've got to go left by one. And so the y value is negative one. So that one will go into there as well. And finally, if you compare the z values, we'll bring that one close as well. We'll find that uh, the difference between them from the pink to the orange, you've got to go up by two. And so that two goes as the last entry of that vector. Okay. And the distance between them then, between the pink and the orange, will be the length of that red vector. So we pull out our Pythagoras with those three numbers. And by complete coincidence, I promise it is root 14 again. Okay. All right. So um, was there a way to do that sort of without drawing all those things. Well, actually, we, we can borrow ideas from maybe complex numbers. It's, it's very similar. With two vectors v and w, the vector going from v to w is just w minus v. So just like in complex numbers, right? Uh, the vector going from v to w, right, is exactly w minus v. And so you subtract the coordinates and you can rewind and see that that's exactly what happened in our picture. And the distance between those two vectors is just the length of that difference vector. Okay. Also notice that our vectors are sort of typeset in, in sort of bold font. Um, 
when you write this, of course, by hand, you can't write bold things very easily. Uh, conventions often we either underline things that are vectors or we put a little arrow on top of them, right? I think more modern things, we, we not often uh, use the bold stuff in typing, but it's either way uh, for writing. Okay, so other concepts from 2D geometry, as we said before, transfer easily as well. For example, a midpoint is just averaging the X values and Y values and Z values. There's just three of them now, but it's the same thing. All right, and that will be a theme we see quite quite often throughout this topic. Okay, All right, I said before that um, as I try to animate this stuff, I'm I'm going to use more realistic projections onto the 2D screen. I am experimenting with a new way of making these videos, um, but I thought for fun and just to try it out, um, I'll show you where parallel lines in 2D space can actually uh, be seen to meet, can be seen to converge to the same point if you apply a little 3D trick to them, okay? So have a look at this. Um, we're going to draw two parallel lines on a 2D plane, right? But now what we're going to do is take this plane and sort of embed it in 3D space like that. And we're even going to make like a coordinate system on it. So we're going to give it this X, Y, Z system. And then we're going to grab that plane and boost it one up into the air. Right. And so it's going to have like a Z equals one equation on that plane. OK. And so after we do this, um, what we're going to do with these sort of parallel lines, those two red lines, is we're going to shoot them off really, really, really long. Okay, and we're going to try and see what happens if you look at this from different angles. So just watch from the ground. And you see it's actually the same parallel lines, truly parallel. But when you look at them from, say, ground level, they look like they're meeting. They look like they're converging to the same point. It's like if you're standing on, don't do this, but if you're standing on train tracks and you sort of looked at them, look like they're meeting in the distance, right? Just by taking our 2D universe and embedding that in 3D space, right, in some clever way, we can actually recreate that illusion, right? And you might be like, well, that's just a trick. That's just an optical illusion. But here's the fun part. In maths, we can take that optical illusion and turn it into a reality. Right. We can take the illusion of the parallel lines meeting and actually define a consistent mathematical universe in which that is truth, not just an illusion. It's actually truth in that universe. And that is super useful, apart from being really cool. Um, that is very useful because you can imagine um, how useful it is to have these sorts of illusions come to life when you're doing things like animation not these sorts of animation but like making cartoons or or making a game or whatever where you want to enter a character's head or enter their vision right and so you have the whole world defined in some like a you know, 3d vector space right and you can enter their perspective on it and you can just use maths to create that 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 um field of view Right. And so it's, it's kind of cool what you can do with this, this sort of thing when you change geometries away from just the 2D geometry that you've grown up with. And you can start uh, changing to some 3D worlds. And we won't get to this. It's called projective geometry. But it's really cool to see that that's the sort of thing that can happen once you expand to these worlds. So I look forward to doing this stuff with you, um, to studying these 3D things with you. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys later.